Song plant. So, Paul Fernie, good to have you here with us today. Paul makes a service once a year. And we just wanted to say thank you. For... <laughs> oh, I am in rare form. Um, you remember, Jennifer, I was at your house last night at about 11. I beeped, but you and Joe did not wake up. So, just wanted to. Um, been a crazy week. Crazy week. Great week. And, uh, man, I just wanted to to thank you guys for the opportunity of, of having so many wonderful days, um, meeting so many wonderful people, and uh, having the opportunity to be, you know, representing at least in a decent way who Jesus really is. And I... Uh, met some wonderful guys, you know, this morning. Um, it's just great to start the day knowing that you're walking in your passion, that you're walking in your assignment, that you, you get to actually do things that are just worth doing, you know? And I, um, I, we were pri privileged to watch on Thursday here um, a whole population, a whole community of, of homeless people. Um, and, and, and Adam has kind of like spearheaded with a, another group, really becoming an answer to the homeless situation right here in Elmira. And uh, I just, I, the things that I heard, I mean, let me just give you some things I heard. They have a leader amongst the homeless community that is pastoring them extremely well, caring for them, shepherding them, looking out for them. Now, I don't know if he's a believer or not, but I know that what he's doing is Jesus. It's weird, but he's caring for these people like most pastors don't do. I'm like, dear Jesus. And then, and then I hear they have a pl they're putting plans together where the homeless community is looking to purchase homes so they're not homeless anymore. Isn't, I'm like, dude, this is like revelation. What a concept that if you're homeless, buy a home. And, they're, and, 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 and man, Adam, I just celebrate you, dude. It started with giving a little food and answering some needs to let's come up with some answers from heaven as to how to fix this thing. And we get to be a part of that. Crazy. The stories. Listening to people's stories. You want to hear some good stories? Listen to some homeless people's stories. Nuts. It's crazy. Then, then we get to, you know, I walk in here Saturday morning and you got a bunch of ladies in here Dancer sizing. I thought it was going to be yoga. Well, yoga's pretty quiet. Not these girls. Woo! They're hollering and hooting and hollering. And like our, our fitness center, Dr. Cassetta's up there and he goes, hey, they're louder out there than we are in here. Then, then in the fitness center, Dr. Cassetta, I got to meet Ian, his grandson. His grandson's in there watching Papa, you know, work out and sweat and got to meet some New people that Dr. Cassetta brought to the fitness center. Community, community, community. I just love it. And, that, and then, you know, and then to be able to, to sit and listen to people go, thank you for doing this. So I just wanted to say to you, thank you, because there are a whole lot of people that are starting to awaken to the fact that there's something more to live for than what they're currently living for, and they're experiencing it because they get to ex experience the peace and the presence of God without a preacher preaching. I, so, so Friday, I hear all this noise out in the, in the great room. I'm like, what in the world is going on out there? I'm gonna have to tell Matt, because these guys are getting rowdy out there. I walk in and Matt's in there. He's playing with all these kids from 
all over our community that are here because we're doing this dance-off thing that they're going to take a competition and send a group of dancers from our region to France for the Olympics. And like it's starting here. And so what happened was they all brought their brothers and sisters who were about this big. We could have had kids church on Saturday out there. We did have kids church. It just wasn't traditional kids church. It was beautiful. They're all just sweating and running around and banging their heads and Matt's laughing at them. It's just a, and we got to interact with so many beautiful people and they loved our burgers and they loved our pizza. They loved the atmosphere. They loved people just, wow, you guys are nice. So thank you for being nice. I just wanted to thank you for being nice. Thank you for showing up. Then, then after that, we got to go up with thousands of people to set the night to music or something like that up there. And I'm like, what is it called? Set the sky to music. That's right. I saw you. And I, I'm there and I do a little Facebook post and everybody starts finding me. Pastor Scott, Pastor Scott, Pastor Scott, Pastor Scott. Like, I must have talked to 60-some people last night. And here's, let me just tell you what they said. I, I, I had I Matter Foundation, I Matter Festival, and I Matter Fitness. We had two tables set up there, and we sponsored a wellness tent. And we talked about our I Matter homes, and we talked about, and we just, and people, all they, all, they came and they were asking all these questions, and then, and then, ready for this? They go, oh, aren't you the guys that are doing the L? I said, well, it depends on who's asking. And then, but, then, but then, here's, let me just tell you, my wife was there for a few of them. Let me just tell you that what they were saying. Thank you. I brought my daughter. Thank you for creating a safe place. Thank you for doing I Matter. Thank you for doing, and I, and I just wanted to bring those reports to you because sitting in a couple of buses out here, we're going to have what it looks to be a, our first sold out event today. And that, that means that in this room, when it's 93 degrees outside, there's going to be 1,050 people. And I'm telling you right now, they're not just going to be standing around. Yeah. So, like Alex. So I, I just wanted to, if we could, I, I wanted you guys, if you, if you would, I, I just want to read this passage to you this morning. I... I was hearing this all day yesterday, and, and, and then I found it in Scripture. But I won't read it all. I'll just read you some of it. It says, workers for the harvest. And I've always thought that i got to pray for those people that are the harvest. That's not what he said. He did say this, that the harvest is ready and waiting to be what? Harvested. Ripe. And I'm going to tell you right now that they are ripe. They are not ripe for what we know as the church, but they are ripe for what we know as Jesus. That, that's just the truth. Because the desire of the world is who Jesus is. The desire of the world is they want peace. They want hope. They want insight. They want wisdom. They want a friend. They want a father. They want a family. All of that is contained in the person called Jesus. The problem is, is we've been praying for the harvest when we should have been praying for us to be ready to receive the harvest. And I... I thank you guys because you guys are weird enough and risky enough to actually do what Jesus did. And what Jesus taught his disciples was bring those that are tormented, bring those that are sick, bring those that need healing, bring those that need hope, bring, those, bring them to me. Get them into my presence. Does that make now, the disciples at first said, keep them away from Jesus, keep them away from Jesus. He, Jesus said, no, 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 do not keep them away from me. Get them 
to me. And, I, and, he, and he goes on, and, and in that context of Scripture, he says this. Jesus walked throughout the region with the, listen to this, joyful message. Not the turn and burn. Not the you're on a highway to hell. Not the repent or die. He, didn't, he brought a joyful message of God's kingdom. See, people don't want heaven because they don't realize what is available from heaven. And we have got to do what Jesus said. We got to bring heaven to earth. And we got to be separate. Got to come out from among them. Don't be under the spirit of stupid. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And, and with that, he never made a lost person feel like they were lost. He always made them feel at home around him. So he goes, this joyful message of God's kingdom realm, watch this, he taught in their meeting houses and wherever he went, watch this, he demonstrated God's power by healing every kind of disease and every kind of illness. There's not one thing that there is out there that Jesus doesn't have an answer to. In fact, he had an answer before there was ever a problem. And like, I think it was Dave that said a couple weeks ago to somebody somewhere, maybe it was just me and I'm gonna let you in on our conversation. But people, listen, we have got to start answering the questions that people are asking rather than talking about things that they're not concerned about. And you're not gonna know what people need to know unless you're willing to listen to their story and hear their heart because then you can actually get to the root of the problem rather than thinking that we know it all because we don't know it all. And if anybody tells you that you do know it all, tell them there's only one who knows and his name is God. It's funny, I was sitting right next to a tarot, is it, what, 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 tarot, what card, reader? This, yeah, right? I loved her. I'm sitting here speaking life over people. She comes over to me and she goes, what you doing? I go, I'm loving on people. She goes, you're messing my stuff up over here. I go, oh, I don't want to mess your stuff up. Let's talk. She goes, well, who are you? I said, I'm Pastor Scott. Oh, I kind of figured that out. But let me tell you what she was doing. She was there serving people. Come here, Dave. I'm not jumping down. I'm, my hypocrisy only goes so far. So, sit in that, sit in that chair. So, so I'm over there, you know. <laughs> I'm over there. I'm, let me spin you around this way. I didn't want to stand in front of Tony that way. That would have been really weird. So I'm sitting there just doing, you know, talking to people and that kind of stuff. And what is, um, I think her name was Samantha. What's Sam doing? Well, she's over there. And I watch her. I watch her, and she's really pouring her heart into serving. Keep going. These, <laughs> serving. These people, right? And she's and she and I look and she's like praying over them. Now I'm I'm thinking, and people are coming and they're sitting down and not knowing what they're engaged with right now, right? But I like thanks, buddy. I might just I can, I can only touch you so long with them. So so I so I'm like I'm like I'm like wow. What if? I mean, what if? What if the church was showing up in droves? There's thousands of people in this place. And see, our thought is, well, we gotta be at, she's my enemy. She's not my enemy. What she's under the influence by is my enemy. Hey, let's go. But I love that woman. 
I love that woman. I love that woman. And what she was doing was amazing. I just wish that the children of darkness were not more wise than the children of light. That's what I wish. Because what we think is, well, I'm just going to stay in the church and pray. That's my assignment is to stay in the church and pray. Not Listen, pray. Please pray. But then get into the game. We got to get into the game. We got to show up. We got to be available. I would not have known the people that I met yesterday if I wouldn't have been at the place where the people were at yesterday. Does that make sense? We are the salt. We are the light of this world, and we've got to affect change. But you can't affect change if you're not showing up to the game. This is practice in here. This is practice, but what good is it for us to practice if we're not gonna show up and play in the game? I'm just like, so I just wanna, this is, believe it or not, I wanna thank you guys, because you just keep showing up. The harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Because we have a theology that says, I'll stand back here and all of the world is going to hell in a handbasket. I'm just telling you right now, it is not. For 50 years, we had something that the federal government was involved with that it shifted, it changed. And I'm going to tell you, it shifted and it changed because, now listen, now listen. This, we got to understand this. Just because we're celebrating, there's an option for babies not to be aborted. Thank you, Jesus. But I wanna, I also wanna say this. We are not against women. We are not, we are, listen, these are hard choices a lot of times for people. And and this is such a difficult thing. And sometimes there's lives at risk. See, we've gotta understand that as a church, you're not gonna legislate morality. You're not, you can't, you can't just like keep putting things in a place. We're not gonna, we're not gonna make, listen, we gotta have, we gotta start seeing people have a heart change. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it begins with me. I gotta stay in a place postured where I have a heart change before God because I moved with compassion for the people that I'm around. I gotta care about them. I, I felt so bad. Felt so bad yesterday. I made a statement on Facebook, and there was a young man that said, said, man, it didn't sound like I had much compassion behind what I said, and there's nothing but compassion in the fact I don't want to see babies' lives taken, and I don't want to see women's lives taken. I don't want to see, I, don't, I, I am about life. I'm not about a culture of death. I want to save lives wherever we can save lives. I'm just, I'm just tired of government thinking that they're God, and government is not God. They're not, we can't legislate this stuff. But what we gotta do is, we've gotta show up as parents. We gotta show up as fathers and mothers and influence a world in such a way that, because here's the deal. Listen, if there were other options, right. and, and listen, they wouldn't choose an option of death. They would choose an option of life. The church has gotta rise up and say, I'll foster a kid, I'll adopt a kid, I'll take a kid. It's a lifelong commitment to do such a thing. But let's not stand in judgment over people that don't know what to do and they're so, they're so desperate. And let's not be mean about it. <laughs> you know, let's, like, let's not be militant about it. Let's just stand back and say, man, I, I'm not in your shoes. But let me hear your story and then let me see if I can help you. Yeah. That's, that, that awakening, that's how you shift culture. So I... I have really prepared a message for today, too. I might share you five minutes of it. Just... Would you ask my wife to speak life over me, please? She goes, it's pretty typical. <clears throat> I, would like, I would like everyone, Brenda, where are you? Sherry? Brenda's doing stuff. Is she doing stuff like out there? Can we can we go can we go grab her really quick if she's if she's if she's out there? And then Matt and I want I want everyone everyone who is on point for serving tonight. Sound guys, all you guys, you guys just all come up here. Come on, Paul. I know it's only once a year, but come on up. I love that guy. Oh, yeah, Carl was at that last night, too. See, wherever there's a tent, there's Carl. It's just, (laughs) it is true. 
Matthew, you going to be here tonight? Oh, Paul, Paul correct me. He's been here twice for sure. Come on up, Levi. Matthew. Is Trevor around? No? Come on, come on, come on up, come on up here, bro. Lisa, grab him, throw him up, throw him up here. That's it. So come on, Lise. Not I just like you guys. Um, because what the Bible says is that since the harvest is plentiful, it's ripe, it's ready, that we would pray for those, for the workers. And, uh, and, and I, um, you can't give what you don't have. So I would like you guys, if you would, to pray with me in agreement for these warriors because we, we are going into battle, not, not, we're not going into battle against people. We're going into a battle for people. And uh, there'll be wars fought. We, we, we're not going to fight wars, are we, um, Tony? We're not going to fight carnal wars. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna ramp it up a notch. We're going to fight with weapons of warfare that are actually heaven's weapons of warfare. And so, so there's three things that, four things that I would like you guys to pray with me for. One is that there would be so much joy, right? That there'd be so much hope, right? That, that, there, that there, would be, there would be so much peace and that we'd be on good ground, righteous ground, not the need to be right, big difference, but that we would be on good ground and that we'd be filled and overflowing with Holy Spirit so that his kingdom would come, that his will would be done for the majority of people that have never stepped into this, this, this atmosphere ever in their lives, that this would be an invitation for them to actually hunger and thirst for more. Because the Bible says if you just taste and see that the Lord is good, then you'll never be satisfied with anything else. So that's my prayer. I prayed it. Now let's agree. If you guys would, let's put our hands towards these people, these kings and priests of the Most High God. And Father, we're making room for you to move, God. And we ask that you do to us what you want to do through us. That, Father, that everything that we touch will have a significant shift and movement towards you. That every conversation we have will honor you. That, Father, there be sweet incense going up day and night today, day and night today, day and night. Every conversation, every, every single act that it would be something worthy of a king. There'd be something, something that, would, that, that, would, that, that you would stand back and say, well done, well done. My kids, my sons, my daughters, well done. Help us to be aware, help us to be cognitively aware of the needs, the, 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 the situations, and to listen to the stories of all those that we come in contact with tonight. Let us make room for those that you made room for and those that you came for and those that you decided to die for. Father, I pray that you, Jesus, Holy Spirit, that you, all three of you, would be represented well by every single thought, every single action, every single intention, that, God, we would be strengthened in our weak areas because you're attracted to our weaknesses. And that, God, that every single one on this team, God, every single one on this team would be anointed and overflowing and charged 
with the shock of heaven, God, that there'd be shock and awe that would come as a result of the yeah, peace buddy. and the goodness and the mercy and the grace and the kindness and the love that everything that we do, every hamburger, every piece of pizza, every bun that we touch, God, that everything will have an anointing and a charge on it, that, Father, that there'd be something of your presence that's tangible for every single one that walks through these doors today. Father, let there not be one be left untouched. I pray it, God. We bless you, God, and we receive it from you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> so, I will say this, that I think there's plenty of room, even though it will be a full house, for anyone who wants to be here. And I'll tell you, this is all you gotta do. Greet people as they're coming in, greet people while they're here, and greet people while they're, everybody deserves a kind look, a kind word, a kind touch, appropriately, and, and, and maybe buy somebody a, a water, or maybe it's a, gonna be a, a sandwich or something. Just have a conversation. Don't push yourself, but just be available because there's gonna be lots of opportunities to hear the stories of a lot of amazing people, and, and it won't be loud at all. So, so tonight is a pre preclude, if you would, to what we're going to be doing on July 30th with iMatter. Tonight there'll be 1,000, 1,050. At iMatter, there'll be 1,400 to 1,800. iMatter sold out in four hours. And uh, it's funny. It's funny, and, I, and I'm okay with this, but people are starting to figure out what this church is up to. A lot don't agree with it, but they're starting to figure it out. And I, and I want to tell you that they're coming, people are coming and they're saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, not for saving our souls, not for leading us to Jesus. They are thanking us for saving lives, for saving their daughter's lives, their son's lives, their family's lives. Let me just ask you something. Is that Jesus or not? Well, when you read scripture, what was the first thing Jesus did? Did he meet their natural needs or did he meet their spiritual needs? Did you have to qualify before you got delivered of demons? Did you have to qualify before you got healed? The answer is no. Yet the church has made it in such a way, well, I can't pray for you unless you quit smoking. I've heard that at the altar. Come back when you quit smoking and I'll pray for you. Can I just tell you something? Let's catch the fish and let Jesus clean them. I don't know anybody who catches a clean fish. If you do, you're a freak. I caught this gutted fish. Please don't eat it. <laughs> this water was opened, Michael. Okay. So, I, uh, you guys talked about the I Met Her Banquet, right? July 19th, $35 a plate. Please come. I beseech you. Brethren and sisterin, please invite. It's really funny. I, we had a new person in men's club Wednesday night. Do you know why we had a new person in men's club, club men's club Wednesday night? Because I invited them. <laughs> Unbelievable. See, do you realize? that they are not gonna know unless we tell them. That they're not gonna hear unless somebody speaks it. Like, it actually takes us to engage more than a text, even though I actually invited them via text. <laughs> People are just waiting for the ask. But can I say this? Ask appropriately. How, what's appropriately? 
When the Father puts them on your mind, ask. If a father points somebody out, talk to them. And so for this I Matter, for this I Matter banquet, just like anything else, the I Matter banquet funds a free festival that actually costs about $150,000. Well, that seems like an awful lot of money for these crazy people. It is, unless one of these crazy people is your son or daughter. How much would you give? We have the theology. What is a soul worth? That's what I've heard. So, and lots of you give all kinds of ways. But if this is an opportunity that you think you'd like to partake in and hear all things I matter, like why we're doing this thing and what's been the history and what's been the results and what's been the outcome and why we're still doing it, please come. You're going to hear some amazing stories from a principal, from administrators and coaches, and from students from a school district that got rocked by a suicide and I Matter came in and helped them navigate that season, and you're going to hear what Jesus did in a school district. So, what date is it? Yeah, very good. Very good. So, I've got 11 minutes to be done. You ready? We, we've already had church already. Worship was off the hook. Oh, go see my wife, Lisa, in the foyer today. In fact, there's only one exit that you can go out today, and it's right by her. So. I wanted to talk today because um, this seems to be a topic that culture's asking, and it's a topic that I've been concerned about, you know, myself daily. It really bothers me that I don't know what's going to happen 10 minutes from now. It bothers me. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Now, I've made plans. I've got a schedule. I've got a calendar. But the truth of the matter is, I did not plan on having a stroke. But yet, while I'm in my recliner, it just showed up unannounced. And so, what do we do with our faith that allows us to navigate an uncertain future. Because we do not know, I don't care who you are, no one knows what's coming next. In fact, it says in Ecclesiastes 8, 7, no one knows what will happen in the future and there is no one who can tell you. It's funny, I used this yesterday with my friend. And she goes, well, would you like me to, you know, read your palm? I go, nope. I said, but I'll let you if you can tell me how I can win lottery today. And she just laughed. I said, because here's the deal. If you can, listen, we got we to understand something. We got to stop basing our, on our, our lives on people's opinions. We need to base our lives on God's opinion. What, God, what are you saying? What are you speaking about this thing? What is your heart about this matter? If we would stay there, we wouldn't all stress out. I'm so tired of the church becoming angry with people who don't know hmm, what we know. And we react to things like, like we want to all fight. Why would you want to react to people's reactions and make a reaction cycle out of it? Why don't we come into these storms and be what Jesus would be and bring peace to the situation? Speak life over the situation. Speak hope over the situation. Listen, even, what if we just brought this simple thing called understanding to people that we need to stretch to understand? How valuable would they feel? If, man, let me hear your heart. Let me hear your story. I haven't walked in your shoes. I haven't been in that situation. I can't even fathom what you must have gone through. James 4, 13 through 17 says, now listen, 
You who say today or tomorrow we'll go to a certain city and we'll stay there for a year, we will open up a business there and we will make a profit, but, but you don't even know what will happen tomorrow and your life is as brief and as uncertain as the mist of the morning fog. It's here a little while, but then it disappears. So instead, what you ought to say is if... It is the Lord's will. We will live long enough to do this or that. Otherwise, you are just boasting and bragging about yourself, and that kind of pride is wrong and evil. But remember, anytime you know the right and good thing to do, but you don't do it, that is sin. To know the right thing to do and not do it is sin. To know the thing not to do and to do it is sin. There's two different ways you can do it. But here's, here's the deal. This is, this is very, very, very simple. You should make a business plan for your life, shouldn't we, Dave? Dave just talked about this with our staff on Tuesday. He showed us his business plan. And right here in James, this guy gave a business plan. But what, here's what you gotta know. Make your plans. But in the context, make room for God. In the context, let him have some adjustments let him have some very, don't be so stuck to your plans that you miss his plans. It's a big, big deal. And so what do we do? There's three mistakes that we do when we're dealing with our future. And here's a solution to each one of them. The first thing is, is a lot of times, number one, is we make our plans without asking God. I mean, that, why is God the 10th option rather than the first? I'm gonna to talk to Dave, I'm gonna to talk to Lisa, I'm gonna to talk to my, my manager team, I'm gonna to talk to my elders, I'm gonna to talk to, well, why don't we start, start, just start. Father, what's your heart? Jesus said it this way, man, I only do what my father's doing and I'm only gonna say what my father is saying. And it wasn't like Jesus was weak, he was God. But he yielded to his father's opinions on all matters and he taught us what, watch this, Jesus taught us what it would look like if humans would actually fully submit to God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And, and here's the deal, you really can't fully submit to God the Father without God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit is on board. He's the one who guides you into all truth. Who wants Holy Spirit? Father, I pray in Jesus, keep your hands up. Father, I pray in Jesus' name an overwhelming filling over abundance filling of your Holy Spirit that comes with wisdom, with life, with peace, with joy. Father, would your kindness compel us to change the way that we have thought about you, Holy Spirit, so that we can fully receive everything that we need and everything that we desire. Fill us, God, to that place where we have life and have it more abundantly, we pray. Let there be a power surge in us and through us that will actually be effective to change the things, Father, that are according to your plans, your purposes, and to your will. So, Father, we make plans, right? We want to make plans with your heart and mind. It says here in James 4.13, now listen who you say today or tomorrow, we'll go to this certain city or that place. James 4.13, so have God's blessing and in, watch this, and involve him in your plans. Key to doing that, pray. Pray as you plan your life. Father, what's your will? What, what are your thoughts on this? And then wait to listen to hear the answer. How many know that he actually wants to talk to you? How many know that you actually can hear him? How many know to be able to talk to him and hear him, you gotta make room for him? I'm gonna tell you just personally what I, I read of Jesus and I've experienced in my life. It should begin at the early part of the day before all the distractions come in. Take time, spend time. Listen, it may not have to be three or four hours. It may be three or four minutes, but pause. Father, what's your heart? And let that peace come and then move from a place of peace and don't move until you have his peace. Pray till you have peace. Is peace. Proverbs says, trust in the Lord with all, all of your heart. And do not depend on your own logic. Do not depend on your own understanding. Ouch! I oftentimes think I know better than God. 
until the results come. I go, oh, you were right. And I was mistaken. In all of your plans, so with all of your heart and in all of your plans, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. If you want to know, this is in James 1.5, if you want to know what God wants you to do, just ask him. And he will gladly tell you, for he is always ready to give a generous supply of wisdom to all who ask him. You have not because you ask not. So when you ask, don't fill it with your answer. Wait for his. All right. Number two. Second mistake we make. We presume that we'll have tomorrow. Can I just tell you something? Don't procrastinate. You don't know about tomorrow. Can I just put it this way? Delayed obedience is disobedience. If he asks you to do something, it's not, I'll get to that later after this. If he asks you to do something, answer it in the now. I don't feel like God's talking to me. Get a yes before he asks you. Is there anything on the table that is on the table that you're not gonna take off the table if he asks you to do it? Is there anything he can ask you that you wouldn't do? Deal with that. Cricket, 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 cricket. James 4, 14 said, but you don't even know what will happen tomorrow and your life is brief and uncertain. Don't live in that. Now, if it is the Lord's will, can everybody, how do you spell life? This is not a trick question. L-I-F-E. What are the two letters in life? Two middle letters in life. I-F. It doesn't stand for I matter fitness. It actually is if. Let me just give you some really maybe good news. In your life, If you live, if you live a full life, the average person will live 27,375 days. His invitation is, don't waste one of them. And the way you don't waste one of them is that all of your thoughts and your moments and your days are unto the Lord. Live your life unto him. The best life, the most purpose life, the most fulfilling life is the life that he has for you. So if you take the if and go, well, if, well, if, and if, and if, and if, if this and that and that and that, don't make, watch this. Number three, I gotta end, is that we actually put off doing what is right and good and God and we substitute it for other things. Don't put off, don't procrastinate. Don't, don't, you know what? After this happens, God, then I'll start serving you better. Or after this, I'll start, I know I should be going to church, but after this gets fixed, then I'll go to church. I know I should be reading my Bible, but after this, then I'll read my Bible. I know, well, listen, listen, I'm not saying any of those things are necessarily, what should I say? How should I say this? Just do what God's asking you to do and make room for him. What's he asking you to do? There's those things that he's asking you. I'm gonna give you an example. Last, remember last week I talked about the fact he said, hey, why don't you smile? Well, guess what he did to me this week, Dave? He said, why don't you start laughing more? Remember I told him shut up before? I just laughed at him when he said that. But I found that ramping it up, see, God, God takes you a step at a time, and he moves you a step at a time to actually be able to experience. Do you think, do you think he asked me to start smiling to hurt me? Now. Do you think he asked me to start laughing more to hurt me? Well, if he asked me that, well, why did he ask me? The Bible says that laughter does good like medicine. So I said, okay, I'm gonna say something to you. God will never ask you to do something that's not actually good for you, even in serving other people. Do you know that serving other people is actually good for you? 
Do you know that being kind to other people is actually good for you? Actually, smiling at other people, loving others is actually good for you? Everything he asks you to do is actually good for you. I'm such a better person when I'm looking at the other needs of other people and helping them with their needs rather than just being concerned about my own. So it's a, it's, it's a ramp up. So don't put off good things. Do the God things. So I wanted to close with this. It's out of um, the Passion Translation. It's 1 John 2, 3 through 6. It says, here's how we can be sure that we've truly come to know God. It's if we keep his commands. If someone claims I have come to know God by experience, yet doesn't keep God's commands, he or she is a phony, and the truth finds no place in him or her. But the love of God, watch this, will be perfected within the one who obeys God's word. We can be sure that we've only come to live in intimacy with God, not just by saying, I'm intimate with God, but by actually walking in the footsteps of Jesus. So I keep telling people, you feel that anointing come right on, right? That keyboard comes on. Glory cloud coming in, somebody. I was saying something really important. And just um, get near somebody, and close enough that you can actually actually just touch their shoulder, all right? And if you don't want to be touched, say, don't touch me. But other than that. <laughs> Father, I pray community, God. I pray connections are strengthened. I, I pray that hope is instilled, that there be an infusion, God, of hope. Father, I pray that your love would so overwhelm us, that your goodness and your kindness and your mercy, God, would you please release to us everything that you wanna release through us. I pray that everyone in here becomes more hopeful today. I pray that everyone in here gets an infusion of life into their mortal bodies, God. Strength would come, Father, that the weariness would be subject and downplayed, that hope would arise, that peace would arise, that joy would arise, because your joy, God, is our strength. I pray that just like Israel, that we are prepared for the battle, that we get prepared in Egypt for the battle that is ours to take the promised land that you have designed for each and every one of us. And I pray, Father, that everyone feels today, everyone right here, right now, feels more valuable than they did when they walked in this door. And that, Father, as a result of that, that everyone who walks through these doors today and tonight, that they will all feel how valuable, how important that they are, that they actually matter, God, I pray. In Jesus, your most powerful, your most wonderful name, let your identity be known in the earth, God. Let it be known that everyone would find out who they are because they have realized who you are, God. Speak it in beauty, in life, and in hope. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys.